What's up, everybody? Roger and Victoria here from the Disc Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be giving our predictions from the D23 Expo, but primarily just focusing on the parks and the resorts. Um, we're going to, there'll be another episode up later this week where we talk about the movies and stuff, but we felt oh, there was going to be a bit too much information for one. So, first off, parks. So, in some ways, I think we should, what we could probably do with this one here is maybe take a prediction and take it in turns and see where we go. Um, so I'm going to give my first prediction. All right. Disneyland Paris, um, with the full buyout, whether or not they actually announce it there, they will announce either... Um, I don't think they're going to announce the third park because that wasn't in all the press stuff, all the things. They're going to announce the new Marvel attractions and some of the new de details of stuff that they're going to be doing to boost up Disneyland to kind of refurbish. I think there's going to be a nice big chunk of Disneyland Paris getting a, a load of, you know, I think they said there's something like 19 billion. I remember we talked about that a while ago. It was all in this document that got sent to everyone that was buying it of what they intended to do. And I would not be at all surprised because that would be a very nice kind of thing of going, here's Paris, we now own it. We're going to build a Marvel land or, you know, we're going to build some attractions and, you know, we're going to fix this and we're going to repair that and we're going to do this. You know, that would be a very... I know the Americans have a tendency to think, why are you spending money on anywhere outside of America? But um, I think it's going to be Paris getting a lot of the attention from the international. Shanghai maybe get some in, but I think Paris, it's their turn for being the international one now that Shanghai is kind of bringing in money. Oh, no, I absolutely agree. I feel like now that they fully can, this is their first part overseas that they completely have control over they're gonna announce pretty much everything i feel mm. like and, especially the whole park yeah and also as well as um the trip paris is you know they've never been very good at the like the communication things but once it's in within line with disney i am expecting stuff to start creeping through a little bit better on like the parks blog and i think d23 is going to be a good time just to be like and also i think as well like with the marvel thing as well it was a bit like um a big a strong push for that and anything else that they're going to be you know new d details and stuff even if it's just like a five minute kind of thing of like about disneyland paris about all the things they're going to be doing there you know they spent the money on it then they now need to kind of do it properly oh absolutely i mean i feel like i feel like they have basically a blank canvas at this point they can just do whatever bring people just so much with that new with that park over there yeah I'm really excited. Yes. So I don't think I still don't think they're going to open, announce the third part there. I think they need to fix what they've got there first. So, on to your first prediction. What do you think is going to be announced from the park side? Um, see, I I was originally going to say you know Epcot because it's obvious, but all, honestly, I'm thinking Hong Kong. Yeah. Well, they're going to be a, a second park or an expansion of some kind. Well, they already announced they're going to do an expansion, but they haven't really share too much about it besides just concept art but they have announced marvel a marvel land some frozen stuff but i feel like they're going to give us a little more detail as far as the attractions and what the castle is going to look like in depth yeah i suppose yeah they are knocking down the castle and rebuilding it so giving us a good a clearer indication that could be a good way of doing it i do think that's i think rebuilding the castle is kind of a big deal so i do think it's definitely going to get brought up in the show um I don't know about it too much more because obviously they're still trying to buy back property, certain, you know, percentage by percentage from the um, from I think it's like the Hong Kong government or the Chinese government there to do it. So yeah, definitely um, could very easy, uh, there's still going to be something there because you don't knock down a castle and rebuild it every in every in every other park, and then just don't say anything else about it. Like that's why I was like they're they're rebuilding an entire castle from scratch, mm. like. I need more. I need more yeah. information. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love them to kind of redo the Marvel, the Iron Man attraction and bring it to somewhere else, you know, Disneyland or to over to Paris and stuff or do both. So, okay. So that's cool. So then you're going down the Hollywood. Um, I'll finish off the trifecta. I, like I said, Shanghai, I know there's more announcements coming. I can't help but feel like there might not be anything for Shanghai because I know they are planning and stuff, but they need a few years of bring in some money and they've spent so much on that park they need to recoup they need to let it go and also just you know like you say you know if they're spending money on paris and hong kong and 
you know, I mean, Tokyo's slightly different and, and the, uh, the other parks. I think Shanghai's had its time, the whole thank you Shanghai hashtag, you know, definitely, I think it's their time to go, yeah, okay, you've had all, we, we've had all the money for the last few years, let everybody else go. Exactly. I mean, I, feel, I heard they were kind of going into their sophomore slump right now, and I feel like they're going to do like a, you know, one year congratulations kind of thing, but they really aren't going to cover it too much. No. Okay, so on to your second, um, second um, sort of prediction. Uh, Epcot, of course. Epcot's been the buzz definitely since the past month. I've been told Imagineers have been leaking this, like little bits and pieces. I don't know how true Get that us is. Already. But <laughs> it's like it's like we all already pretty much know what's gonna happen. We're just waiting for them to confirm it at the convention. Yeah, what they're gonna do so. is they're gonna bring a crane in, they're gonna attach it <laughs> onto the top of a spaceship Earth and just let it dangle and take out the whole of Future World. <laughs> that's a bit bolder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly that. That's it. Everyone knows. But yeah, they're they're pretty much overhauling this entire part. Like they're getting rid of the entrance pretty much completely, giving us a new entrance, giving us a new future world, adding pavilions to World Showcase. Like it, it's 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 going to be a multi year project. Yeah, I think the thing is with Epcot is I do wonder is that thing of like as future world goes. Obviously, there's that line between building new attractions from scratch. And closing attractions and refurbishing, they have to take it very carefully because what you don't want to do is walk in, walk past a load of boards, go on test track, and then walk into into the um, world showcase. That's not going to work very well for tourists going. They're going to have to take it in turns. You know, if they shut down Universe of Energy and you know, and they shut down, I don't know, not I wouldn't necessarily the land, but like something else like. Um, a figment or another thing they're going to have to do it in steps and starts you know it would make sense to kind of maybe attack you know like the the what the pixar shorts are in there now and maybe go after that big building that they put the the festival in and do maybe and do ellen and do those things first i would imagine to kind of get them going because if they close down tomorrow no one's really probably going to notice as much as if they do something to Spaceship Earth, because obviously they've lost, a, they've the, that's changing, Innovation West, and they are going to have to, you know, tear, I unless they literally, I mean, I just can't imagine them just closing off Future World completely, and... Oh, just, no, absolutely not. They yeah. can't do that. I mean, the only thing is, like, it's that thing, if, if they do a big thing and they get you around the other way and you can do Test Track, well, the thing is, you're still going to do Test Track, you're still going to do Soarin', and... Uh, aren't they doing a big refurb to Mission Space over the summer? So those three attractions, to me, they're all new. They've all been redone up. They are going to be, they're the ones staying open to kind of keep Future World going for a while. I mean, even the Finding Nemo attraction could be used um, for a, quite a while left anyway. But everything else kind of, you know, could easily just be, you know, it's hard to know. I mean, you know, will Future World even exist? Will they just get rid of it? Will they just turn into a bigger pavilion? Yeah, that's very true. I mean, a lot of people are saying they're just going to do strictly IPs, but a lot of people, I've actually heard come out of the woodwork say that they're going to kind of try and go back to the original vision of Epcot, which I, they've tried that so hard, and it's clearly failed. Like, I feel like we need to I, the thing go is, towards the 21st century. The thing is to me, it's like doing, like, sucking in a space or something. You slap, you slap it on with an a inside out. It's it's the pulling power. When people are picking, oh, not necessarily picking, going through the brochure, but when they're looking online and they're looking at all the attractions, like, oh, yeah, it is an inside out attraction, yay, and you know, there's a, you know, there's a new Ratatouille ride and there's a Mulan show and all this stuff. If it says someone like, you know, I don't know, like, you know, Project A B C, no, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have that draw. It could be the best ride in the world. It's not going to have that same draw. I know, you know, this whole thing about using, you know, he's, he's bit the Epcot needs, it's going to be just, it'll be, I think it'll just be IP after IP after IP. Yeah, and a lot of people are really concerned about that. That's the only thing, but I feel like they can do it in a tasteful way. Like, personally, I already know right off the bat, Fitment is not staying much longer, just based off of surveys I've seen that I've personally seen. Yeah. It's not staying. It's yeah, I longer. think I saw a tweet from you earlier with this like questionnaire and stuff. The thing is with Figment, they could, they could slap him into a ride very, you know, he'd very easily fit in with an inside out attraction. They could just bring him in for a cameo, and it would kind of keep everybody happy. Or he, even into 
integrates with them as like Bing Bong kind of as a replacement for Bing Bong kind of thing. If they're talking to him, that could work. You know, there is, it's just that, and you know, it's like the, and even the land, you know, get rid of that boat ride through the, through the, through the farm, you know, get rid of that. You know, there's a lot of space there. Um, I just think, to be honest, Epcot, this whole future world thing is, there's just no point. There's just that it dates so badly and they can't, you know, it's again, it's, you know, you've got some, a Tron roller coaster or something like that just to be, it's just going to become another IP farm. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm not mad at it, you know, there being IPs, but because in the end, it's going to draw in who it needs to draw in. And he's going to draw in the current generation. That's who's going to bring in the money, unfortunately. Mm. I think as well. But, as, uh, see, to me, I'm also looking at, like, how many attractions can you remember from the last 15, 20 years, 30 years, have they built that is no IP? They're so... Mm. I'm just, you know, I mean... Just trying to think of, you know, obviously they redid Soarin' and they've redone Test Track, but they were, you know, already existing before. You know, the, the amount of, like, non... If they're building a new zone or something like that, how little do they kind of do that's not themed? Yeah, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't think of any. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> you know, it's like when, when Disney kind of came out with a lot of these ideas, he didn't have as many IPs as he did now. And then you can't help but wonder would he, you know, he, you know, Big Thunder Mountain and Haunted Mansion was, he didn't have anything that he liked that, that he could use as an IP. Um, for me, Epcot is no longer, you know, this whole thing about it being a future world. I, we were talking about this, um, I was talking to my wife the other day about when I was a kid, when I was about eight, nine years old on our first visit, we sat in Innovations. And they sat in an electric car and we were all told this is the future. This week we got told that the French government are basically out, you know, by, by 2040, all cars have to be electric. Volvo announced this week as well that they're all going electric cars from 2019 in the UK and around here. And I'm, I'm sort of saying that so this feels like the future that I was when I was a kid and sat in that car in Epcot. It's finally starting to come reality. And it's like, it's going to be nearly 40 years by the time it comes in. And I don't think the technology of now looking 40 years ahead, no company wants to go in there and show it off because if they do, they want to build it, get it out there and, you know, it's out of date and there's no money in it for Disney. It really isn't. And then I don't agree with the comments a few people have been saying, where it's like these IPs don't fit in with this certain vision. But to be fair, I mean... If we're going to talk about Hollywood Studios, I mean, Power isn't Disney, but it's there. It's one of the most popular attractions. Aerosmith's there, and that's one of the most popular attractions. That whole area was originally supposed to be an entire Roger Rabbit Toontown land. Yes. And does Pandora really fit in Animal Kingdom? No. Exactly. I, it, but it, everyone loves it now. It's, <laughs> to me, it's like, you know, we are going to see a massive announcement. I just think we're going to... I think... It almost feels like they're gonna have. They are gonna come out. I can't help but feel like they need to actually just be like, right, let's just rip the band aid right off. Let's just let these people just moan. We'll let the people be excited. Let's excited. You know, the little leak things out so people aren't quite so shocked. But right, um, they need to if they're gonna start construction soon because now Pandora's done. You know, they've unless they've all just gone over to Hollywood Studios, but. You know, they are just going to have to rip, rip the band-aid right off and just l let it all... You know, I'd rather see concept art and say, no, 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 inside that, da, 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 announce five or six different attractions and get everyone so that everyone's got three, four years to get used to the idea. Well, I ha I've been to Epcot recently. I have seen them doing, like, little things that, like, the average guest wouldn't notice. Like, slowly but surely, like, they blocked off a little bit of International Gateway for the gondolas. Mm. They blocked off like certain areas for like the Ellen's and all that like if a normal guest wouldn't notice but yeah. you know I would <laughs> yeah I mean it's like you know like we've talked about like the Ratatouille ride you know so if, they, if they're building that now and I think by the sounds of it they've the kind of constructions kind of started on that that you know that can be open before other things are and if they shut down Ellen and something like that they are you know if they shut down two attractions that are running now to redo them 
it's fine. They can't kind of close everything off at once. Um, unless they'd be really serious and kind of go like, okay, we are going to just really cut it. But I don't know. So we'll, we'll, I, it's going to be interesting to see if we might get nothing. Where Epcot goes, no, we're not doing anything. We're just going to put, a, <laughs> we're just going to put a new, a new a couple of new carts from countries that we've not seen in the food and wine festival, and that'll be it. But so I'm then going to shift gears. I'm going to stay in Walt Disney World, Toy Story Land. Yeah. Um, 2018 opening apparently is what they're doing. Videos and footages of it seems to become. I think we're going to get rough date summer of maybe may june next year of this opening um because i think they need to get some people into hollywood studios um it looks like it's coming together quite quickly and that will boost up that will be their new stuff for may next year because it just you know may's kind of the start of the season to kind of get things in they haven't got anything i can't think of anything else that's opening at the moment at those at disney world um now off the top of my head no right now i think it's just toy story land yeah so it would make sense to have that up and running um because there only it was only a couple of rides wasn't there it wasn't and a bit of theming and stuff i would be very surprised if we don't if it's not i mean they said 2018 it could be november but um i'm gonna guess may i'm definitely gonna say memorial day weekend mm, I'm, I'm hoping so um yeah especially it'd be a bit busy but there we go so that's that's one there so i'm going to throw this one back to you another prediction maybe you know have you got one on the other coast let me see um i haven't really heard too much about disneyland to be honest besides no. Fant- i mean all their stuff is pretty much opening is already opened or i mean the final one was phantasmic yeah and um, that opens on the 17th yeah i mean i've <laughs> Kind of integrating into that one, um, and obviously the big, like, you know, elephant in the room, it's obviously Star Wars Land. Um, I can't help but feel Star Wars Land is going to be one of the major announcements um, where they go into more concept art, more details about what's in both parks, and that is going to be the main focus for Disneyland for the next few years, and obviously Hollywood Studios kind of falls into that. Whether or not they announce the new name of Star Wars Land for Star Wars World for the, the theme park, or whatever they're going to do there, maybe whether or not we get the rename. But I would imagine it would make more sense to it after the new lands have opened up. But um, yeah, I think Disneyland, the, the West Coast, that is going to be their main focus is just getting that information out about Star Wars. Yeah, the, besides that, oh, the parade, Paint the Night, because we still don't know what's going on with Paint the Night. We don't, I mean, apparently it's coming to California Adventure mm. this fall. That hasn't been confirmed yet, but I mean, that leaves the question of what's going to happen with Disney World. Are we get, when are we getting a nighttime for it? Yeah, it definitely, to me, it definitely feels like, you know, Star Wars Land is the major, major thing over there at Disney. It's one of the biggest expansions they've ever done there. That is going to be the main focus. More concept art, more details. I mean, I don't even know if it's going to be open by the time the next next D twenty three happens, because it might be around that same time. Again, it would be May June two thousand nineteen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like I feel like Disneyland is more ahead of Disney World as far as construction, so it's probably mm-hmm. going to be tied in with that. Yeah, I mean, it just it's that thing of you know they need the new stuff there at the beginning of the season. You know, Universal's you know doing other bits and pieces. You know, if they do Toy Story Land next year in Hollywood Studios and then the following year they've got Star Wars Land, that'll keep them covering over for a few years while they're doing the other stuff elsewhere. Because Epcot, you know, you know, and other things. But Disneyland, I can't see much more happening bar um, Star Wars Land. Yeah, I, honestly, I think that's just mm. the main thing right now. Okay, I think that's kind of probably the majority of them. Have you got any other sort of sneaky ones that you're thinking, any kind of things you want to throw out there that you may be thinking about? Um, I've been teetering tottering again with the idea of the parade. That's really it. Mm. Like, I haven't heard any rumors about that. Mm. So, I mean, I'm just I thinking know. about the amount of stuff we've talked about and how much money <laughs> exactly everything we've said is being built. It's like, yeah, they, that's that's. Billion, you know, probably like 
two, three, four, five, and half a trillion dollars. It's, it's, it's a lot of money. So I think, you know, I think we probably said there's enough there that they can, that they're spending their money on. That they, you know, I, I think anything more. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Carry on. <laughs> oh no! Just, ooh, I, I just realized like that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of a lot of stuff. A lot of things going on there. But we'd love to know your thoughts on what you're predicting. Obviously, next week, once the show, once D23 is all over, we'll kind of go through again and kind of give our thoughts on what was announced and maybe we're completely wrong and there's going to be a new topery. Um, or topery or whatever they want to call it. Um, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then there'll be a new um, fidget spinner in Disneyland or something like that. But, yeah, so that, that we go. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Remember, you can check us out over at thiskingdom.com. You can also hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. You can also hit that subscribe on the audio platforms and you can leave a review there. Victoria, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram at he calls me Pineapple Princess. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. We shall see you guys soon. Later. Bye.